when i read this chapter i would request all of you to please follow the text and try to read along also go through the illustrations graphs and tabular resources given in the textbook so let us start the chapter is water resources chapter number 3 hey pinky did you see that awesome tv reports on floods in assam my god what havoc they have created it has destroyed and swept away everything in its path yes chintu i did isn't it strange that water can give life and take life as well what would we do without water we need water to drink cook our food wash our clothes and wash ourselves as well my father was telling me that in his factory they need a lot of water for a number of things did you know that they even need water for cooling the machines in fact the factory runs on the power supplied by the hydropower plant now i can understand why through the ages we humans have chosen to live near water courses along the rivers and other water sources like springs lakes ponds and oases you already know that 3/4 of the earth's surface is covered with water but only a small proportion of it accounts for fresh water that can be put to use this fresh water is mainly obtained from surface run off and ground water that is continually being renewed and recharged through the hydro logical cycle all water moves within the hydrological cycle ensuring that water is renewable resource you might wonder that if 3/4 of the world is covered with water and water is a renewable resource then how is it that countries and regions around the globe suffer from water scarcity why is it predicted that by 2025 nearly 2 billion people will live in absolute water scarcity water scarcity and the need for water conservation and management given the wind abundance and renewability of water it is difficult to imagine that we may suffer from water scarcity the moment we speak of water shortages we immediately associate it with regions having low rainfall or those that are drought prone we instantaneously visualize the deserts of rajasthan and women balancing many matkas used for collecting and storing water and traveling a long distance to get water true the availability of water resources varies over space and time mainly due to variation in seasonal and annual precipitation but water scarcity in most cases is caused by over exploitation excessive use and unequal access to water among different social groups where is then water scarcity likely to occur as you have as you have read in the hydrological cycle fresh water can be obtained directly from precipitation surface runoff and groundwater is it possible that an area or region may have ample water resources but is still facing water scarcity many of our cities are such examples thus water scarcity may be an outcome of large and growing population and consequent greater demands for water and unequal access to it a nation requires more water not only for domestic use but also to produce more food hence to facilitate higher fruit grain production water resources are being over exploited to expand irrigated areas for dry season agriculture irrigated agriculture is the largest consumer of water now it is needed to revolutionize the agriculture through developing drought resistant crop and dry farming techniques you may have seen in many television advertisements that most farmers have their own wells and tube wells in their farms for irrigation to increase their produce but have you ever wondered what this could result in that may lead to falling groundwater levels adversely affecting water availability and food security of the people post independent india witnessed intensive industrialization and urbanization creating vast opportunities for us today large industrial houses are as common place as industrial units of many mncs The ever increasing number of industries has made matters worse by exerting pressure on existing freshwater resources. Industries apart from being heavy users of water also require power to run them. Much of this energy comes from hydroelectric power. Today in India hydroelectric power contributes approximately 22% of total electricity produced. Moreover, multiplying urban centers with large and dense population and urban lifestyles have not only added to water and energy requirements but have further aggravated the problem if you look into housing societies or colonies in the cities you would find that most of these have their own groundwater pumping devices to meet their water needs 
Not surprisingly, we find that fragile water resources are being overexploited and have caused their depletion in several of these cities. So far, we have focused on the quantitative aspects of water scarcity. Now, let us consider another situation where water is sufficiently available to meet the needs of the people, but the area still suffers from water scarcity. This scarcity may be due to bad quality of water. Lately, there has been a growing concern that even if there is ample water to meet the needs of people, much of it may be polluted by domestic and industrial wastes, chemicals, pesticides and fertilizers used in agriculture, thus making it hazardous for human use. Government of India has accorded highest priority to improve the quality of life and enhance ease of living of people, especially those living in rural areas, by announcing the Jal Jeevan Mission. The goal of JJM is to enable every rural household to get a short supply of portable piped water at service level of 55 litres per capita per day regularly on long-term basis by ensuring functionality of the tap water connections. India's rivers, especially the smaller ones, have all turned into toxic streams and even the big ones like the Ganga and Yamuna are far from being pure. The assault on India's rivers from population growth, agriculture, modernization, urbanization and industrialization is enormous and growing by the day. This entire life stands threatened. You may have already realized that the need of the hour is to conserve and manage our water resources to safeguard ourselves from health hazards, to ensure food security, continuation of our livelihoods and productive activities and also to prevent degradation of our natural ecosystems. Over exploitation and mismanagement of water resources will improvise this resource and cause ecological crisis that may have profound impact on our lives. Multipurpose River Project and Integrated Water Resource Management but how do we conserve and manage water? Archaeological and historical records show that from ancient times we have been constructing sophisticated hydraulic structures like dams built of stone rubble, reservoirs or lakes, embankment, embankments and canals for irrigation. Not surprisingly, we have continued this tradition in modern India by building dams in most of our river basins. Hydraulic structures in ancient India In the 1st century BC, Sringa Veerapura near Allahabad had sophisticated water harvesting system channeling the flood water of the river Ganga. During the time of Chandragupta Maurya, dams, lakes and irrigation system were extensively built. Evidences of sophisticated irrigation works have also been found in Kalinga, that is Odisha, Nagarjuna Konda, which is in Andhra Pradesh, Benur in Karnataka, Kolhapur in Maharashtra, etc. In 11th century, Bhopal Lake, one of the largest artificial lakes of its time, was built. In the 40s, the tank in Hoskas, Delhi, was constructed by Iltutmish for supplying water to Siri Fort area. What are dams and how do they help us in conserving and managing water? Dams were traditionally built to impound rivers and rainwater that could be used later to irrigate agricultural fields. Not just for irrigation but for electricity generation, water supply for domestic and industrial uses, flood control, recreation, inland navigation and fish breeding. Hence, dams are now referred to as multipurpose projects where the many uses of the impounded water are integrated with one another. For example, in the Satlaj Bias River Basin, the Bhakranangal project water is being used both for hydro power production and irrigation. Similarly, the Hirakun project in Mahanandi Basin integrates conservation of water with flood control. Multipurpose, proje multipurpose projects launched after independence with their integrated water resource management approach were thought of as the vehicle that would lead the nation to development and progress overcoming the handicap of its colonial past. Jawaharlal Nehru proudly proclaimed the dams as the temples of modern India. The reason behind being that it would integrate development of agriculture and the village economy with rapid industrialization and growth of the urban economy. In recent years, multipurpose projects and large dams have come under great scrutiny and opposition for a variety of reasons. Regulating and damming of rivers affect their natural flow causing poor sediment flow and excessive sedimentation at the bottom of reservoir resulted in rockier stream beds and poorer habitats for rivers 
aquatic life. Dams also fragment rivers, making it difficult for aquatic fauna to migrate, especially for spawning. The reservoirs that are created on the floodplains also submerge the existing vegetation and soil, leading to its decomposition over a period of time. Multipurpose projects and large dams have also been the cause of many new environmental movements like Narmada Bajao Andolan and the Tihri Dam Andolan, etc. Resistance of these projects has primarily been due to large-scale displacement of local communities. Local people often had to give up their land, livelihood and their meager access to and control over resources for the greater good of the nation. So, if the local people are not benefiting from such projects, then who is benefited? Perhaps the landowners and large farmers, interlists and few urban centers. Take the case of the landless in a village. Does he really gain from such a project? Narmada Bajao Andolan or Save Narmada Movement is a non governmental organization that mobilized tribal people, farmers, environmentalists and human rights activists against the Sardar River Dam being built across the Narmada River in Gujarat. It originally focused on environmental issues related to trees that would be submerged under the dam water. Recently, it has refocused the aim to enable poor citizens, especially the, the Austis displaced people, to get full rehabilitation facilities from the government. People felt that their suffering would not be in vain, accepted the trauma of displacement, believing in the promise of irrigated fields and plentiful harvest. So often the survivors of Rihan told us that they accepted their sufferings as sacrifice for the sake of their nation. But now, after 30 bitter years of being adrift, their livelihood having even been more precarious, they keep asking, are we the only ones chosen to make sacrifice for the nation? Sardar Sarovar Dam has been built over Narmada River in Gujarat. This is one of the largest water resource projects of India, covering four states, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat and Rajasthan. The Sardar Sarovar project would meet the requirement of water in drought-prone desert areas of Gujarat and Rajasthan. Irrigation has also changed the cropping pattern of many regions with farmers shifting to water-intensive and commercial crops. This has great, great ecological consequences like salinization of soil. At the same time, it has transformed the social landscape, increasing the social gap between the richer landowners and landless poor. As we can see, the dams did create conflicts between people wanting different uses and benefits from the same water resources. In Gujarat, the Sabarmati Basin farmers were agitated and almost caused a riot over the higher priority given to water supply in urban areas, particularly during droughts. Interstate water disputes are also becoming common with regard to sharing the cost and benefits of multipurpose projects. Do you know that Krishna Godavari dispute is due to objections raised by Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh governments? It is regarding the diversion of more water at Koina by Maharashtra government for a multipurpose project. This would reduce downstream flow in their states with adverse consequences for agriculture and industry. Objections to the project arose due to their failure to achieve the purposes for which they were built. Ironically, the dams that were constructed to control floods have triggered floods due to sedimentation in the reservoir. Moreover, the big dams have mostly been unsuccessful in controlling floods at the time of excessive rainfall. You may have seen or read how the release of water from dams during heavy rains aggravated the flood situation in Maharashtra and Gujarat in 2006. The floods have not only devastated life and property but also caused extensive soil erosion. Sedimentation also meant that the floodplains were deprived of silt, a natural fertilizer further adding on to the problem of flood degradation. It also observed that the multipurpose projects induced earthquakes, caused waterborne diseases and pests and pollution resulting from excessive use of water. Rainwater harvesting. Many thought that given the disadvantages and rising resistance against the multipurpose projects, water harvesting system was a viable alternative, both socio-economically and environmentally. In ancient India, along with the sophisticated hydraulic structures, there existed an Extraordinary tradition of water harvesting system, people had in-depth knowledge of rainfall regimes and soil types and developed wide-ranging techniques to harvest rainwater, groundwater, river water and flood water in keeping with the local ecological conditions and their water needs. In hill and mountainous regions, people built diversions, channels like the gulls, 
or kuls of the western himalayas for agriculture rooftop rainwater harvesting was commonly practiced to store drinking water particularly in rajasthan in the flood plains in the flood plains of bengal people developed inundation channels to irrigate their fields in arid and semi arid regions agricultural fields were converted into rain fed storage structures that allowed the water to stand and moisture into soil like khandans in jaisalmer or johars in other parts of rajasthan in the semi arid and arid regions of rajasthan particularly in bikaner phalodi and bamer almost all the houses traditionally had groundwater tanks or tankas for storing drinking water the tanks could be as large as a big room one household in phalodi had a tank that was 6.1 meters deep 4.27 meters long and 2.44 meters wide The tankas were part of the well-developed rooftop rainwater harvesting system and were built inside the main house or the courtyard. They were connected to the sloping roofs of the houses through a pipe. Rain falling on the rooftops would travel down the pipes and was stored in these underground tankas. The first spell the first spell of rain was usually not collected as this would clean the roofs and the pipes. The rainwater from subsequent showers was then collected. the rain water can be stored in tankas till the next rainfall making it an extremely reliable source of drinking water when all other sources are dried up particularly in summers rain water or palar pani as commonly referred to in these parts the purest form of natural water many houses constructed underground rooms adjoining the tanka to beat the summer heat as it would keep the room cool Rooftop rainwater harvesting is most common practice in Shillong Meghalaya. It is interesting because Cherapunji and Mount Ram situated at a distance of 55 km from Shillong receive the highest rainfall in the world. Yet the state capital Shillong faces acute shortage of water. Nearly every household in the city has a rooftop rainwater harvesting structure. Nearly 15 to 25% of the total water Nearly 15 to 25% of the total water requirement of the household comes from rooftop water harvesting. In Western Rajasthan sadly the practice of rooftop rainwater harvesting is on the decline as plenty of water is available due to perennial Indira Gandhi canal though some houses still maintain the tankas since they do not like the taste of tap water fortunately in many parts of rural and urban india rooftop rainwater harvesting is being successfully adapted to store and conserve water a remote backward village in mysuru karnataka villagers have installed in their households rooftop rainwater harvesting system to meet their water needs nearly 200 households have installed this system and the village has earned the rare distinction of being rich in rainwater see the figure below for a better understanding of the rooftop rainwater harvesting system which is adapted here Gendathur receives an annual precipitation of 1000 mm and with 80% of collection efficiency and of about 10 fillings every house can collect and use about 50000 liters of water annually from the 200 houses the net amount of rainwater harvested annually amounts to 1 lakh liters rooftop harvesting was common across the towns and villages of the thar rainwater that falls on the sloping roof of houses is taken through a pipe into an underground tanka built in the main house or in the courtyard the picture above shows water being taken from a neighbor's roof through a long pipe here the neighbor's rooftop has been used for collection of rainwater the picture shows a hole through which rainwater flows down into an underground tanka Tamil Nadu is the first state in India which has made rooftop rainwater harvesting structure compulsory to all the houses across the state. There are legal provisions to punish the defaulters. Bamboo drip irrigation system in Meghalaya a 200 year old system of tapping stream and spring water to use bamboo pipes is prevalent about 18 to 20 liters of water enters the bamboo pipe system gets transported over hundreds of meters and finally reduces to 20 to 80 drops per minute at the site of the plant picture 1 bamboo pipes are used to divert perennial springs on hilltops to the lower reaches by gravity Picture two and three: the channel sections made of bamboo divert water 
to the plant site where it is distributed into branches again made and laid out with different forms of bamboo pipes. The flow of water into pipe is controlled by manipulating the pipe positions. Picture 4. If the pipes pass a road, they are taken high above the land. Picture 5 and 6. Reduced channel sections and diversion units are used at the last stage of water application. The last channel section enables water to be dropped near the roots of the plants. If you like this audiobook, give it to your friends and also subscribe to the channel. Thank you once again.